Jeez. What? What? Good lord. This video is about YouTube's. This video is about YouTube's ineffectiveness in dealing with harassment and cyberbullying. A Canadian cadre has, of November 2008, made over 70 YouTube channels to harass and broadcast libel and slander about me and anybody who supports me. Can't you be here? So people really like to see you on the on the video. Hmm? And people like really they like to see you because if they're bored, if they're bored with what I'm talking about, then they can look at you. Because if they think I'm ugly and stuff, then they can look at you. Yes, yeah, so you can be here too. And this, you like this thing. You like this thing. The background for this problem is described in some detail on my website, redoddles.com. Uh, but briefly, a Canadian woman, Sherry, came here to Norway in February 2008 to buy some Bengal kittens, like this one, uh, for her cattery that she and her, her sister-in-law were starting. Unfortunately, she wanted more than kittens, and I couldn't accommodate her. Masculine women just don't turn me on. Uh, I did, however, feel very sorry for her. For um, for nearly a week while she was here in Norway, she had a grand total of 66 cents on her bank card. Um, neither of her two employers would lift a finger to help her. So I agreed to later ship... Um, in March 2008, uh, four kittens to her that she and her sister-in-law could sell and we could later share the profit. They advertised and people came to see them, but nobody would buy. So April, May 2008, I considered the, these kittens a write-off. I was seeing a Danish girl at that time and I posted a video of me and her in a cafe. Sherry apparently didn't appreciate that and I saw that Sherry made some comments on her channel about it. Shortly after that, I received a complaint from a woman that uh, bought one of the kittens. The woman tried to get her money back in accordance with a written guarantee because the kitten had uh, serious behavioral problems, most likely as a result of being kept in a cage a large portion of the summer. We're talking about four unneutered male kittens that are getting to be six, seven months old, and they'll start fighting and spraying urine all over her apartment, her little apartment, and um, she had also several other cats. So she probably had to keep them caged most of the time. I wrote to the cattery and told them to return the money, and I also asked about the other three kittens. That's when the shit hit the fan. Uh, they tried to blackmail me, threatening to contact my son's mother and say I was cheating on my taxes, child support, etc., etc. Over 70 YouTube channels and 30 videos. Now this is Sherry's OCDRN channel. OCD stands for Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Obsessive, abuse, and harassment are apparently some of Sherry's favorite words. This channel has been on YouTube since October the 24th. I guess I better mention the year, it's 2009. The channel has my picture on the background. Two videos were posted on this channel falsely accusing me of animal abuse and child abuse. The child abuse video includes a picture of a person that apparently has been strangled to death. These videos have only recently been removed due to a terms of use violation. I guess YouTube doesn't have a problem with my picture on, posted on the background without my permission, nor do they have a problem with uh, my name being used in the profile text. The backgrounds for the false animal abuse accusations are found on my website, com. Click on the link about the Canadian and kitten fraud, then the Canadian woman and her sister-in-law's cyberbullying YouTube videos. Halfway down the page after Rebecca's video called Norwegian Ripoff. As to the false child abuse accusations, it would be very inappropriate and in violation of Norwegian law for me to discuss my son's problems on YouTube. This is the Child Abuser 1 channel the Canadian Family Academy has created on November 8, 2009. Here my name, address, telephone number are published in the profile text and on the background image. The video falsely accusing me of child abuse has been flagged and complained about by several persons. YouTube has not gotten around to removing it, but after all, it's only been there for two and a half weeks. And here we have the Richard Norton Abuse Channel. They created on November the 9th, 2009. My name, address, telephone number on the background image. Of course, the background image has been reported. And here we have the Abusive Idiot Channel, also created by the Canadian family on uh, November the 9th, 2009. And we're busy that day.
my name, address, and telephone on the background image. Of course, the background image has been reported, but uh, YouTube doesn't take this sort of thing very seriously. The Nitwit from Norway channel, they created on November 16th, 2009. My picture on the background, taken from a frame from my video called The Five Awesome Kitties Hack. The Five Awesome Kitties Hack video is about how this family managed to destroy a channel where I and several others uh, regularly posted videos of our cats. They deleted all of our videos and posted ten of their own. And here we have the Jane Doe 12344 channel they created on November the 8th. Here they feature the video they published on their channel, Child Abuser 1. This way they can publish my address and telephone number on their Jane Doe 12344 channel. If YouTube ever gets around to removing the video or suspending the Child Abuser 1 channel, it probably won't affect this Jane Doe channel. The Canadian family uses these channels to post comments on other channels also. Here's the Canadian family catteries Radonald's Kitten Mill channel accusing me of animal abuse. The Canadian cattery has made several videos and channels to harass and intimidate my friend Vinny. They have published her name, address, and telephone number and pictures of her seven-year-old grandson on YouTube. The Canadian family has telephoned her several times and even had pizza delivered to her California home. Watch Vinny's video called International Criminal Harassment posted on her YouTube channel and Vloggerhead's channel. As for the nice Norwegians, that would be my scorned stalker ex-girlfriend Torrid Toril and her emotionally disturbed uncle. She threatened to report me to the Norwegian Animal Welfare Authorities if I do not close down my YouTube account. Her uncle, according to her, wants to come and have a talk with me. You can learn more about this extraordinary affair by watching my video called Letter Regarding Internet Harassment. This is a translation of a letter I sent to, among other places, the Norwegian police. The Norwegian police advised her to close down this channel and stay off YouTube. She closed it, but a few days later she created this Suntorial channel. I seem to attract nutty women like shit draws flies. Here is the Share123100 channel created on November the 3rd, 2009. It's Sherry's channel and she has some videos about when she came to Norway to buy cats. Here she slanders my cattery name, Rodonald's, claiming she rescued these cats. And here we have my scorned ex-girlfriend and a wannabe. And we have this individual that last September 2008 sent out two bulletins to 60 YouTube channels accusing me of child abuse. Her informed source told her that the Danish girl and I were cheating on the Danish girl's boyfriend. Penny made it her business to inform the YouTube community about this newsworthy item and offered to provide the boyfriend's contact details. I suppose Penny has made well over a hundred bizarre comments about me. As of the 20th of August 2008 I counted 41 comments on just one video. Her husband, a very well-known and respected news director at WEAU-TV, has been making weird comments from his YouTube channel, both pre-mortem and post-mortem. And by the way, you can see that many are flagging these videos and accounts, but YouTube doesn't do a damn thing about it. What I don't understand is why on earth their son Lucas, apparently a reasonable and decent person, also working professionally in the media, tolerates this shameful performance. These channels and videos the Canadian Cattery makes doesn't really bother me all that much. It's like a child writing on the blackboard, uh, Barbara's on the rag, or so-and-so is a homo, nothing to go to court about. What bothers me is that the people responsible for removing this material don't do their job.